um, is chairman of the mainstream committee and is currently working on a master's <coughs> in organizational leadership, which sounds appropriate for this, uh, at Gonzaga <coughs> University. So I just want to set the scene a little bit. We're using, we're talking about using social media. So social media includes things like Facebook, which is the elephant in the room, um, and some other things like um, Twitter. Does everybody know what Twitter is? Okay, Stephen will talk about it. Um, YouTube and other video sites. Pinterest. Everybody know what Pinterest is? No, probably not. Okay, Google Plus, Instagram, Flickr, something like Meetup. Have you heard of Meetup? So, um, these are all kind of social media sites, sites where people are getting on them and using them to communicate with each other. And one of the things about social media is that it is a um, pull mechanism rather than a push mechanism. That is, you know, we're conversational. It's not just pushing out material to people. It's, it's talking with people, having a conversation. And that's kind of the essence of using social media. The other thing I'd like to say about it is when you're thinking about doing this, you have to think about what's your purpose? Why are you going to use the social media? And I sort of divided it up into two big areas. One is using it to market your group and square dancing and yourself to a larger population. And the other is using it to build the bonds, the social bonds and the communication bonds within your groups. Okay, and that's all I'm going to say about that. That's just a set of framework and I'm going to turn it over to Stephen. So quiet in here. <laughs> so <clears throat> when I was asked to do this, I wasn't given a lot of direction. And it looks as if the stuff that I was preparing for is going to be a little bit of a repeat from uh, some of the media relations stuff that happened this morning with Bill Boyd and Mike Hogan. Uh, but I hope it's a little different. I didn't have a chance to look at all of their, their, their handouts. Um, I want to start by talking about social media, what it is, what it isn't, and then we'll talk about specific tools. I could probably present or do something on every social media, internet related site, and we'd still just be scratching the surface. I could do a presentation for an hour, and you'd see a little bit about it. So I'm not here to explain to you the intrinsic design of how Facebook works or Pinterest, uh, but I will talk to you about that. Um, I will show us a few of them off when we're done here, and then um, there's, a, I think, a birds of a feather thing, or there's something where we're talking about uh, a breakout session a little bit later where Donna from the home office, not Dana, the other one, uh, has asked about setting up a Facebook group for some of the youth activities and how to configure that. Now that's a different topic, configuration and, and design. And we can talk about that and I can show it to you, but you're going to see it and think, what did he do? And we'll talk about how to get more information later. So these are my thoughts. They're a little blurry, so it's kind of ad, uh, apropos that it's a little blurry on the screen too. Um, these are in no rhyme or reason, but I will tell you that using social media, this is the number one rule in my book. Stay positive or stay silent. It's the, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Um, I was at a, one of my first caller schools and I think it was with Daryl Clendenin, he was saying that callers are your peers and you would never want to say any, anything bad about them because you don't want them to say something bad about you. But this is on a larger global scale if you start making comments. And um, that foot may be the dinner of tomorrow if you are not careful. So um, when we talk about content, when you post things online, however it is you do it, I keep stepping in something very sticky. Whenever, no matter what it is that you do, if it's using Twitter, which is 140 characters, and that's it to talk about what you see, or Facebook, or 
uh, something like Meetup or Google Hangouts or any one of a number of different social media sites. And there's, that's not the only one. Some people roll their own. You can have your own social media sites. It, it encompasses whatever you want it to be. Content leads to conversation. Conversation becomes relationships. Relationships result in the return on investment. Now, I actually spelled that out. Uh, when I first read it someplace, they called it ROI, return on investment. But what is your investment? Sometimes it's money, but it's personal capital. When I talk about being social and working in a social environment, right? we are, we think of ourselves, well, Ms. Cordens call her. Jim Mayo will say, Salt told me this story once, he goes, I'm calling this amazing dance, this, this incredible experience, and those people are enjoying dinner in the, cafe, in the, in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Don't they know how important my dance is? <laughs> he realized that his dance was important to him, but those relationships were important to everybody else. We're talking, I'm talking about social media as an extension of who you are to create a conversation, to create relationships with people that you might or might not know, to increase your audience, to maybe create awareness, which then turns into more dancers. Is it guaranteed? Nothing's guaranteed. But we don't, I'm not looking for guarantees. I'm not trying to even present that there is a guarantee. I'm trying to say that we start a conversation so that there's awareness, and we can play with the awareness. Chris said earlier that it's a, it's a, uh, there's like, in any, any kind of conversation, there's push and pull. I can push the data out to you, and you hear it. Once upon a time, there were three television channels to watch. Mm -hmm. Three. And you get a fourth with a ca television camera that panned back and forth, temperature, barometer, humidity, <laughs> barometer, temperature. That makes me old. I get it. It's what we had. That's a push medium. When you had all your editorial content, you got from one source, three channels. I have one source, thousands of channels. And people may or may not tune into you. So to tune into you, you need to start the conversation. You start it with content. Now, and we'll come back to that idea in a bit. Have an opinion. Very frightening thing to have an opinion. I don't care. Whatever you want. I don't care. Well, if I if I say if I say that the programs are too large, I'm gonna make people that think that the programs are too small angry. If I say that the programs are too small, I'm gonna make somebody else angry. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give you permission. It's okay to make people angry. It's okay. People are not gonna like you. Don't believe me? You should come to my mainstream committee meeting. <laughs> you get over it. Now you have to be responsible and respectful. There is nothing wrong with being disagreeable or to disagree with an opinion as long as you're not rude about it. And that goes back to the first thing. You can be positive. You can speak in positive voices <coughs> and create an audience and still disagree with people. I work at a hospital where there's a lot of people that speak English as their second, third, or fourth language. There's a door that says, do not close. Why not say, keep open? Same thing. One speaks in a positive voice, the other a negative voice. If you don't speak English as your first language and you're creating conversation, and somebody says, do not close, a lot of times the important words are at the beginning and end of sentences. Do close. The not is lost. Speak positively, keep open. Your message carries. And that's the truth, truth of social media. So have an opinion. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of making somebody angry. If you lose a gig, you didn't want that gig anyway. Social media is virtual networking. <clears throat> virtual means that it's not a tangible thing. If I sit down with Barbie, and we have lunch, and we talk about something, square dancing, with what we have in common, right? That's the, one of those things we have in common. It is, we can network, and then she can say, hey, I know somebody up in Seattle, or I say, hey, I know somebody in Oregon, and we can talk. And we take what we know, and we build on that. That's our network. Now, once we have, I talk to Barbie, Barbie says, well, you know what, Lee, 
does these things. I'm like, oh wait, I do those things too. Or I know somebody that does, and maybe I can create other connections. Those are relationships that go back to that return on investment, and the investment is human capital. It is that social thing that we, that we want. And it takes time to build them. Again, it's not, it's not a push thing where I'm gonna say, I want, I think it says Barry. I want Barry to be my friend. I'm gonna make him be my friend. I'm gonna give him my materials. There's nothing in this world. I cannot pay Barry to be my friend. I cannot pay anybody to like me. I cannot pay anybody to be smarter. I cannot pay anybody to be dumber. Maybe they could. But I can encourage them to enjoy my company. And if they don't, then I find someplace else. Again, don't be afraid to have an opinion, but you treat these people online as if they're in front of you. It's really easy to have those muscles. I'm gonna tell this person what I think of them, because you never have to look at them. But if you think of them in the room as if they're in the room with you, that's the relationship you wanna maintain. Just because it's using bits and bytes and electrons doesn't take away from its, its personality. I was uh, at a social media conference thing about how generations use media. And one of them talked about kids, ch children, young men and women that, were grew that grew up mostly in the 1980s. I was born in 1968. Uh, my, some of my formative years were in the 70s, but my latchkey years were in the 80s. I went home after school. I was left alone after school. I did things by myself, and I like being left alone. So what do I use technology for? To be left alone. I like my bubble. I like it. I like being social, don't get me wrong. I love being a caller, it's not part of, it's not something I do, it's part of who I am. But I like being left alone. So I will use these news feeds to be in the privacy of my own home, left alone. However, next generation, same conference, guy says, all these parents that had latchkey kids feel guilty about that. And so now they're hovering over their grandkids because they feel like they neglected their children the first time around. So now these kids are incredibly social and connected to their grandparents and they use technology the opposite way. They use technology to say, hey, let's meet up for dinner. Let's, we're gonna go to a show. Hey, let's go bowling. Hey, let's go to a square dance. Why the heck would I wanna do that? Because it's fun. I heard about it, Stephen Cole said so, and I believe everything I read on TV, and if it's on the internet, it must be true. <laughs> I was a raised a Yankee, by the way. I can talk fast when I need to. <clears throat> Hashtags we're gonna come back to. Hashtags are, were, they started, I believe, and I, I have to look at this one because I'm not 100% sure anymore with Twitter. But then they, they morphed over into other types of social media. Because Facebook used to use just the at sign. If you put an at sign in front of somebody's name, it would show up, you had to tell it, I want to include somebody else in the conversation. The idea of a hashtag, or as I like to think of it as, the pound sign, or the number sign, but the hashtag, allows you to categorize a conversation so that if somebody looks for the conversation, not you, but what you're talking about, they can find it. And I'll show you a website, I have to search for it, because I always, I, I don't, I should write it down, I should make a, a, a bookmark. But I do a quick search for hashtags, and you can find what other people are talking about. And I, I was at a conference last week, um, uh, where we had something at the University of Washington, where I work, um, where they had talked about Tech Connect, and they said, hey, add this hashtag to anything that you're talking about so that we can see. This increases, the idea of a hashtag increases the scope of your conversation so that other people might find it. And that's not, might not, but they might find it. You increase the possibility, the potential. Now, uh, but you have to know how to do that, and I wouldn't worry about looking for it. I would worry more about getting it out there. Be heard, be seen, have an opinion. Have an opinion that's worth reflecting on. Give somebody an experience. That's what we do. So we're gonna talk about hashtags a little bit more, but that's more the conversation. So people think, oh, I have this friend who has six websites and he's got a Facebook page and he's got his own page and he uses LinkedIn and he, and he, and oh my goodness. I'm so, I can't get started, I can't do all that. Think of it this way. Um, who dances mainstream? 
Only. You're doing all, we'll say only right now. Dance is mainstream only. Dance is plus. Advanced. See anything. All right. So those of you that are challenged dancers, you had, if somebody showed you the entire list of all the calls that you know right now and said, this is what you need to learn to do, to do this, you would have said, I'm going to go boldly. Or, okay, when, where do I pay my tuition? Or, uh, those are your choices. It's daunting if you think about the entire system. It's an ecosystem. It is it's a life of its own. So pick one, pick something, and learn it. And we'll, I'll tell you a little bit of a couple secrets about how, I think the next slide or two over, but pick one to start from. It's a launch pad. It is like square dancing is. Uh, you get a taste, that circle left, that first nighter. Out of my left, right, left, grand. Swing your partner, you're out with a date, you're having a great time, and there's a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more. And soon, they're coming and saying, hey, Stephen Cole, could you help me? And I'm like, no! Okay. <laughs> quality trumps quality. No, other way around. Quality trumps quantity. Quality. Not only do you want to have something to say in social media circles, <coughs> you want to have, like, one good thing. Uh, if you were to become my Facebook friend and scan through years and years and years of random insipid postings, and they are random, they are, some of them are funny, and I, I find myself incredibly amusing, and you'll start to see me telling little jokes, things that are pretty innocuous, and because I don't, I don't like to, I like to have an opinion, but I don't like to offend everybody, just most people. It's different. <laughs> um, and sometimes it just happens by me talking. I, I didn't, I'm like, ooh, okay, check that. Um, but I would post something every day, thinking, oh, this is a funny thing. And what happened was that by posting every day or every a couple times a day, people stopped replying to my posts because they weren't unique. They weren't special. It wasn't a conversation. It was just, hey, Stephen talked about funny, and he said something funny, and it was, um, it's like, the, I'm 46 years old, but I read at a 47-year-old level, and my dad is very proud. <laughs> Silly little things like that, right? Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate the chuckles. Uh, try the veal. I'm here until Thursday. Um, <laughs> But it's hard to be funny, but you plan it. And it, and it but you know, too much of it, it becomes lost, it becomes noise. Don't go away, come back. Okay, bye. <laughs> so you don't want to have noise. So, and there are, there are studies that were published about the best time of day to get the most reach. I mean, you, uh, people like to post at their lunch hour, but that's not when people read it. All kinds of stuff. Have something to say, be consistent, be regular, but don't, ugh, just throw it up like over and over and over again. And don't repeat yourself because you think you didn't get heard the first time, you have to say it louder the second. So, how do you get started? I cannot emphasize that third word, trusted, enough. For those of you under listening to the recording at home that don't have my handout, which I did not submit to the home office, it says, find a trusted friend who has been using social media, or it should be a social media channel, and learn from them. Find somebody else that does this already. If you live in the Seattle area, I can find somebody. I call me and I'll see if I can help you. But just like I have a trusted friend in Scorpion's Land that I go to and I say, Susan, I called this tonight and it was a disaster. What did I do wrong? Or Susan comes to my dance and says, you know, that was the best thing. I've never seen that kind of teach before. She is my trusted friend and she will tell me when I make huge mistakes. And I will tell her the same. The thing about it is, is that we trust each other not to hurt each other's feelings. Right? There are those people, I had a caller tell me, everybody will lie to you for the rest of your life. Those that really like your calling are gonna be honest with you and they're gonna say, I love your calling. Those of you, and they're, but they don't wanna hurt your feelings. If you were horrible, I love your calling, you're amazing, because they don't hurt your feelings. People that don't like you love your calling because they want you to fail. They don't want you to change. Mm -hmm. So find a trusted friend that will help you and guide you. And even if your trusted friend said, you know what, I just learned yesterday too, but look what I found. It's a great resource. It's a great thing to think about. 
Be honest, be warm, be authentic. Have an opinion, make it yours, be real. As try as I might, I could try to be Chris Jensen. I could try to be Deborah Karen Jones. I could be, no, I don't have the shoes for it. <laughs> I can't, I can only be me. <laughs> I can only be me, and I'm, I'm having a hard enough time doing that. And you know what's funny? When you're authentic, and you have an authentic problem, or an authentic, authentic success, people will be authentic when it comes to talking to you. Yes, everybody does lie, because of various reasons. But people appreciate that real thing. I sometimes talk about how uh, both Disney and McDonald's ruined us as a society in the United States. I love Disney, as a disclaimer. I Never mind, I just love it. And I like McDonald's, because like when I was in Japan, I was like, oh, thank God, there's a McDonald's. Um, but you can have the exact same cheeseburger from McDonald's in, uh, that you could have gotten in 1950-something or other. It's the exact same cheeseburger. It might even taste the same. And the packaging is what Disney brought us. That perfect packaging. It's wonderful. But is that real? Not so much. You go, to, you go to Walmart and there's a line of Disney toys. You go to McDonald's, there's that assembly line of cheeseburgers. Square Dance Caller is not bringing you an assembly line of anything. Some might think you are, but you're not. And so, let's have an authentic experience. Something that's real, something that might be different, heaven forbid. And then when you're talking on social media, it says, I say, put yourself in the shoes of your dancers and potential dancers on social media. What do they want to hear? Do they want to hear who your partner is in, a, in an ocean wave? Do they care? Two people, and I don't see either one of them in this room, probably care. But what do we care about? We care about socialization, we care about exercise, we care about how our friends are doing, we care about things. Find out, when you start talking, when the dance is, where the lessons are, that they're not lessons, that they are lessons, that you are concerned that we are obsessing. You know, some people might say, what are you obsessing over? I want to see, right? So what are we talking about? Be authentic, and then figure out what that means to the people that you want to talk to. When I say on this slide, post consistently, that means two things. Regular, or be, being regular, doing it somewhat often. Um, I am bad at this right now, and I'm working on it, but I am distracted by a host of other things right now. As soon as I find some normalcy, whatever that means, besides just being a knob on the dryer, I will post more often, more regularly. I will do that. And whether it be, and some people, when I say post regularly, they, they just send out regular email updates. This is what I'm, where I'm calling, this is what I'm doing, this is where I'm going to be, I would love to see you. That's social media. <coughs> Facebook, this is what I'm calling, where I'm calling, who I'm going to see, who I saw. Do it regularly so that people have a reason to find you. I post, and I might not post for a couple weeks. I post, I might not post for a couple days. I might post every day. If, you, if people don't know to look for you, if you're not consistent, then it's kind of hard to follow that, find that pattern. We, we tune in, at least when we had three channels, we tuned in every Thursday for whatever show it was because we knew that's when it was. We knew to look for it. Be useful. I like this one. Think, would people thank you for this? Right? Would people say, hey, I really appreciate knowing that. Now sometimes, do they care about that I can't get the, the, the hard water stains off my bathroom sink? Probably not. So, Complaining about those things, going back to the very first slide, being positive. I don't want to complain, but I also want to present information. We are sharing, because I want to pull you into my world. I don't want to just throw it at you and hope it sticks, but I want to give you a reason to come to me and, and engage, or be part of the engagement. Again, back to you. This is one that should, probably should have been tied with um, the earlier slide about being authentic. Be yourself. Again, I can only be me. You can only be you, and if we take Bill Boyd's wallet, we could be him for an hour and go shopping. <laughs> Share something small every day. It doesn't have to be every day, but something regular. Remember how I said start small? 
hey, calling tonight at the something wheelers, the square wheelers are having a dance on calling tonight. That's all you have to say to start. Maybe nobody pays any attention, but the next day or the next week, you can tell them again, and you tell them again, and you tell them again, and you have a big event, a big set of events. You have built some credibility. I've been calling regularly. I know these people. You are authentic. And you could have a politician that's going to promise you things, or you could have somebody that's authentic and bring you and, and lead you to some sort of relationship. I'm going to do this. For those of you on the recording, uh, it says, hire a professional to manage it if you are unable to put forth the time and effort to run it effectively. Now, when I first read this doing some research, the idea behind this was if you're a corporation or a small business owner and you don't have the time to manage your online presence, hire somebody. And it seems kind of overkill for those of us that are doing this, like one and two offs. But have you seen some of these websites out there that haven't been updated in, since the internet was invented? It still looks like America Online was what was like popular back then. Um, and it doesn't cost a lot of money. I mean, it can. It can cost as much as you want it to cost. But if you put some advertisements out there, you make some phone calls, find a trusted friend, you'll find somebody that's willing to work within your budget. If you don't believe me, uh, anybody do call our dance parties? Anybody ever? I got one, two, okay, do a dance party. When you, they say, what do you charge? Well, I say it depends. And it does depend. But I am willing to work within your budget. But I try to let them throw me the first number. Because every now and then, it's like, well, we only have budgeted $500. Well, you know what? I'm willing to come down to that price. <laughs> For you, because I appreciate what you're trying to do with these people. That's a true story. I'm not making that one up. If I had said, oh, I charge $125, they would have been like, <laughs> not worth it. He undersells himself. So um, they think my price is high. I'm getting a good paycheck. So find somebody and say, what do you charge? Can, I, can we do something, can we do something long term? Can we, can we work out an arrangement? Can we work out a deal? You'd be surprised, not just the college kid type that can do these things, but there are some people, consultants, that do small businesses work regularly. They'll set you up with a Facebook page and do the work for you, so you just click a button and they'll tell you how to do it. It costs money, might not be your thing. So don't do that. I know I will because I would like a, a slightly larger presence. Eventually. <coughs> right now, my hands are full. Good. Right now I'm talking to you. My slide for those of you at home. I don't like reading slides when I was a teacher. I, I figured if you could read, you could read. But I really, with respect to the, to the recording, um, don't talk to people. Talk with them. It seems funny to have a one-way conversation and thinking of it as two ways. But I'm not, I don't want to preach. I don't want to say to you or anybody in this room, this is what you have to do. You have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this. Instead, I would like to talk to you, it's not a real-time conversation. It's not linear. It's not a call and response. I want to share some information. If they choose to respond, then I can. But I can pretend the conversation is continuing. And that's what I'm talking about this. When you get on, if you yell at somebody, and I was at a dance once where it wasn't the caller yelling at somebody, but somebody got yelled at. And it kind of shut down the whole night. Just shut it down. Nobody wants to be at the receiving end of that, and nobody wants to be near it as it happens. So let's talk with people. They're conversations. They're not dictations, they're not dictatorships, they are conversations between two people that one wants to share and one wants to, to, uh, to receive. As part of my master's studies, I have learned that leadership is not what you think it is. We talk about, oh, we should be a leader. Leadership is complicated and nuanced, and one of the things that leadership is, it's a relationship. There's a, la there's a leader and there's a follower. We have leadership and followership. And at any one time, those roles could switch. In this room, right now, I ask you a question, you respond, you ask me a question, suddenly you're the leader. I have to give that to you. And then you can 
then I can take it back. Hopefully not by force, but I could take it back. It's not about taking. It's about sharing. And that's what relationships come back to. I'm not going to tell you that I'll judge you for misspelling. And I was going to spell the word spelling wrong on purpose. <laughs> and I like to be funny, but I thought that would have been a little too over the top, even for me. Um, some web browsers, some things have spell check built in. Don't be afraid to misspell a word every now and then. I'm in a hurry. You can blame autocorrect, right? Oh, doggone autocorrect. Um, but watch your spelling. Put some punctuation in there. And I, uh, I'll show you maybe some sites a little bit later. If I, it won't be hard to find people that spell things wrong. Or, and I like to spell words out. Kids today, they'll say, you are crazy. You know, or they'll spell letter U, R. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That just makes my rule set go off the charts. Every one of you is gifted. Every one of you wants the best for square dancing. Every one of you has a gift to share with humanity. You might not even know what it is. So this slide says, let your personality shine through. Again, the mission, be authentic. I would, I would go to Chris Jensen's dance. I would go to Dottie Walsh's dance. I would go to Deborah Carol Jones's dance for a couple different reasons. But mostly, it's because it's Deborah Carol Jones, because it's Dottie Walsh, because it's Chris Jensen. Because each one of them delivers a different product to me. I buy something from them, maybe brokered through a club. But they are special people in my mind. Dancing, working, <coughs> creating, and being who they are. Even on, whether it be online or on the dance floor, you want that same kind of engagement. I mean, I, heart, I rarely stand behind a table when I'm calling. It's kind of weird. I, I have to go back to my little remote, remote control. I, that's part of who I am. It's not really a shtick. It's, I want to be connected with my audience. It's how I was when I was a teacher. Some people like security. I've got a force field to stay out of my bubble. Doesn't mean it's any less authentic. It's part of my personality. And it's okay to not like it. If you find somebody that, oh, I don't like that, then don't pay attention. Turn the channel. There's 500 of them. So this is one that uh, we're going to come back to a little bit, and we're going to talk about with uh, I was talking to Donna at the home office for the slide people or for the people at home. If you're using Facebook, make sure that you've got a Facebook page, not just your personal profile. This is something that I went round and round and round and round about with myself and other people. You do a search for me on Facebook, you're going to find me, you'll see me. But I also have a Square Dance caller page that is different than my personal page. My personal page has my thoughts, romantic little love things, my, my lovely Laura. Um, and you might not want to see that stuff, but people find it. Strangers will want to friend me. And I was like, no, not going to be my friend. But then I would lose them. So what I have started to do is say, OK, I don't know you. I'll let you be my friend. And then I'll wait a day or two. And then I'll invite them to be a friend of my page. And then I will quietly unfriend them from my personal page. And it, it, the choice is theirs, but it's a way to pass that through. I, uh, next year, if you're listening home office, this is my suggestion for next year, is that I want to talk about personal and professional uh, data security. And I want to talk about sharing online and about how to pres preserve who you are and prevent the bad guys from stealing who you are. It's really easy to sneak in social networking to try to do bad things. Um, you sometimes get fake requests from people, like, I'm already your friend, why do you want to be my friend again? Well, somebody tried to steal their identity and then become my friend so that they could learn more about me based off my page. Uh, I don't have much to offer because I try to keep the stuff on my Facebook page pretty generic. I try not to be very volatile there. Um, but I know some people that are, They're like, oh, don't, I'm not looking can't look. So we should, you should think about this. When you become a friend of somebody's on their, their personal Facebook page, you might see things about them that you really don't like. There may be political, religious, 
moral affiliations that you disagree with. Variety is the spice of life. Free country, free world, free everything. If you don't like that stuff, you, or you don't want to share that stuff, don't. But you have to draw the line yourself. I, I don't care, so I do what I said. I accept their friendship requests, and then I can go to my, uh, my, per my professional page, and I can say, hey, invite this person to be, that's on my friend list, to be a friend of my page or like my page, and then I can unfriend them later. You don't push. You don't say, you have to come to my lessons. You have to come, you have to come. You're not cool unless you come to mine, which is true. <laughs> Thank you for the chuckle. No, you have to, you, you, don't, you don't walk around saying, strong-arming people. You don't threat, you don't cajole, you don't, you don't even, I try not, I like sarcasm. I'm not just a member of the sarcastic club for men. I'm also the president. Um, no, yes I am. So you want to engage people without being like, hey, <coughs> you have to come, and if you don't come, you're not. Yeah. Um, where again, these are conversations. And the thing is, you can't, you can't, you cannot force somebody to do something that they really don't want to do anyway. Why do not <coughs> encourage them to be part of um, what you want to do, and that is create a social experience? And this concludes the slides that I have as far as discussion points regarding social engagement, just as a, as a kind of overview of what to present and how. I have seen slides about what time of day should you post, how often should you post, who should you include, how do you follow people, I mean, how do you follow, not just the hashtags, there's all kinds of stuff, and I can't get that all in an hour. So I just want to talk about the, I mean, the, even the, 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 the description said, I forget what it said, but it was kind of like an overview of how social media works. And I'm going to show some of that in a second. For now, I would like to know if you have any questions, <coughs> comments, thoughts, hopes, dreams, and fears. And um, please do it on the microphone. Tell us who you are, where you're from, mother's maiden name, last four of your social security number. <laughs> My name is Sue White, and I'm from Arkansas. And I really don't understand the use of hashtag. I don't know what that means. All right, would you like me to show you? Okay. Give me a second while I shift. Why don't you go ahead? Darlene from Mesa, Arizona. Um, I just want to emphasize <coughs> that you don't have to have one persona on social media. You can have multiple personas. One area for your personal life, one area for your square dance life, one area for your business life if it's separate from square dancing. And you can do this through social media. You can have multiple personalities. I'm kind of embarrassed to see what's going to show up. Mike Cecil from Los Angeles. Uh, there's an awful lot of colors that are on LinkedIn, and uh, so I, I'm, I'm curious as, as to how we use that more effectively. How we, what, 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 what can we do with it? Good questions. And yeah, Stephen says that's a good question. I would say that's a good question too. I'm on LinkedIn, but I haven't really done much with it. All right. So first thing, for those of you at home, um, you can change the channel for a bit, and I'll come back. I'm going to show some things using a website called Tagboard, T-A-G-B-O-A-R-D.com. And it's a little fuzzy online, or on here, it's on the screen. It says t hashtag, pound sign, whatever you want to call it, Tagboard. And you can search any hashtag. And I will type in the hashtag of pound, S-Q-U-A-R-E-D-A. N-C-I-N-G, which is supposedly what area has been pre-fills in. Um, supposedly what we should be talking up here. <coughs> so um, what'll come up, and I'll I may have to read this. People have posted adding a hashtag to their site. Um, 
random things, not just people that are here. This one, it says, like, after 200 missions in Vietnam, this man flew a square dancing helicopter for the army. I have no idea what that means. But here's a, a picture of some people dancing. You never know what you're going to, what you're, what you'll, now look at the screen. What you're seeing on the screen. What you're seeing being a caterer. Being a caterer. And somebody writes, Atlanta fitness catering, square dancing, retirement party. Um, last night's sunset was awesome, and my guess is that might be it might have been around here. Uh, do I be a pilot? Some random people? I have no idea. But the idea is here that any time that you see the pound sign square dancing, somebody made a comment and posted the picture or something else. Uh, and if you take a look here, I'll show you a couple differences. Um, it's hard to see uh, the differences here, but. This, the little bird, the little tweeter thing, that somebody posted on Twitter. I'm pretty sure the picture is Pinterest, but I'm not 100% sure from back here. The little, there's only gonna be an F that shows up for Facebook. Um, and there are other things you can, you can search for. And with this particular one, you can also create a login. And if you want, a, if you want a, your own place to, to kind of keep track, you can actually create what they call a tag board and see all of the conversations. So, if I created a hashtag Stephen Cole and I said, hey, anytime that you post something with my name on it, or something better, or Caller Lab, or something, Square Dancing is, is the example that they wanted to hear, this search engine will reach out and, and grab it, and you can kind of create a conversation around it, or just see what's going on. Does that answer the question about the hashtags a little bit better? Can I show you a couple more things with them? It's basically putting a key word in your post. So if I wrote something from here, just say I was sitting over there and I wrote, attending Stephen Cole's uh, marvelous presentation on social media, pound signed or hashtag caller lab. And then also added <coughs> hashtag square dancing. That would be two ways that people could find that particular tweet. Okay, so it's a keyword that allows other people to search for things related to that. So, let me get the Virtual Forbes from Maryland. Uh, the other way to think of it is for those of us who are bound to the, the paper thing, it's kind of like a book and it is the index at the back of the book that breaks down by subject. And you just put in that index word with the hashtag, and it calls up all the references to that hashtag. Okay, who else? Somebody else had a question. Okay. Can we Bill? I'm going to expand on my ignorance. I turn on my computer, I bring up the Google page. Can I just take that screen right there and put hashtag square dancing? Let's find out. I'll show you. So when I type just the hashtag by itself, it, in a search engine, it's just going to do the search for the most part. We don't have built-in, most browsers, the ability to search those things. So I type in square dancing and then I get the Square Dance Wikipedia page, a couple demonstrations on YouTube, which we're going to come back to in a minute, and then Caller Lab shows up down here. The tag by itself has no meaning. It has without a reference point, and that reference point is uh, usually, like, in the, not just tag board, there's other places, too, that will uh, aggregate, that will collect the information and, and spit them out for you. Um, I'm going to have to remember my login for my Twitter account. So I will log into that, and I will show you that you can add hashtags to, to those little tweet, the tweets as well, um, just, to, again, to, to have a reference. So, Stephen, you, when you go through... Google, yeah, that's that's a search engine and lots of things pop up, but when you went through Tagboard and and did hashtag square dancing, did that set up where everything that's posted about square dancing pops up on that for you to read, right? It would go and search particular places. So I'm sure it's searching Twitter, it's probably searching Facebook, 
um, other places that use hashtags in particular. It would search Pinterest, it would search various social media sites precisely. So to confirm that anything that was be posted on score dancing on, on any of those mediums media. would turn up under for tag board. Okay. As long as it hit the right hashtag. If they use if you search for the tag and they use that tag. So if well, it's, you'd use the hashtag. They're searching for the pound sign followed by a keyword. So you do have to use the pound sign. You'd use the, I'm not sure in tag board because I think they would just assume that that's what you want. So you would just type the word and it would look for hashtag that word. Affirmative. The, on the tag board they assume that that's how you're doing it. Uh, there are, uh, for a while, at signs were also a popular way to reference a person. So if you typed in at sign, a person's whatever their, either their Twitter handle, like the old CB handle, or their username on Facebook, something like that, that would reference that. Um, we pulled the projector back to try to make it focus and it helped a little bit, uh, but sadly now the top of the screen is off. So I went to the LinkedIn page, my LinkedIn page, and I actually used my, one of my Square Dance promo photos, which I've had retaken, because this one, without a beard, I need to make one with, because that's something else that was supposed to go on the other slide, is that if you, do online um, advertisements, you should look like the picture that people see. Um, I could put my, yeah, I know, really? I, I mean, I put the picture of, of Deborah Carl Jones for Stephen Cole, and they, they looked for this tall blonde woman, and I'm like, sorry, I just can't pull it off. Uh, but um, people look, when I go to a dance, party dance, they look for this picture. They look for this man that looks like this picture. And if I don't look like that, it's going to be a mystery. Are you sure? Um, there was some other question. Okay, uh, before, uh, Barbie asked over here, and I just, Barbie Ashwell from, wait, where in? Oregon. Oregon, someplace in Oregon. Actually, she owns the state now. Uh, someplace in Oregon asked about the, how long these tweets stay with us. Where, what happens to them? Do they evaporate? Do they just go away? They are there forever. Forever. You can try to recall them, you could try to pull them back, I'm gonna delete them, but there are people that will forward them and they will go on and on and on. Um, I did a, I went to a presentation once from a company, EMC, they sell data storage equipment, hard drives really for big computers, and they say that there is, for every person in the United States, there is a 50 gigabyte entry in the cloud, the cloud uh, that we talked about, which I'm gonna come back to in a second, that cloud, 50 gigabytes of data that follows you around the world. Some of it's your own, some of it's your healthcare records, some of it's your social security records, your tax ID, all of those things. There is somebody who's storing data about you someplace. And if you throw stuff up into the internet too, they, you add to it, but it's about 50 gigabytes. It doesn't go away. Um, now, sometimes it evaporates from your screen because like yeah. your current, it shows you on some different feeds, current events. Do you wanna see the most current thing, the most recent thing? So it seems like it evaporates after 30 seconds. You just have to know to find it. Uh, LinkedIn, professional organizations. I have gotten one gig of uh, a party night from LinkedIn <coughs> because it, at some place in here I say that I'm a professional square dance scholar. I, am, I consider myself a professional square dance scholar. I just don't do it full time. I work really hard at what I do to improve the craft and improve my abilities. Somebody said, hey, I see that you're a square dance scholar. They did a search and it showed up. They called me, and my contact information was there. I don't have a problem with it. Um, another, if we do another session next year, uh, we should probably talk about creating those online um, personas, I think is what you use, but you can get a Google number, still I think, that would be, that makes it anonymous. You give them that phone number, which then forwards to your mobile or your home number, or something like that. Um, or you could just say, I don't have a number, you, you email me and I'll call you, or I'll, and I'll call you. Uh, it is a professional, it is, uh, LinkedIn has been described as Facebook for, for professionals. So, I have no, oh, could you just touch my space bar? Pardon me. I know. Well, maybe we'll, there, shh, go wake up, wake up. Okay, I'll have to look in. Uh, when it's not in the presentation mode, it thinks that, that I should actually care about my battery. So, so to answer your question, they don't dry up. The Pinterest pictures, 
It's a search engine for pictures, kind of. It's a social networking where rather than me talking using words, I can show a picture of things that I have. And there's the joke about, look, it's yet my lunch. Oh, look, somebody else's lunch. Oh, look, we're all having lunch. And it's pictures of food. Uh, but it can be pictures of anything. On the back of uh, my handout, we had uh, the social media explained via donuts. And so, you know, on Twitter, it's, you might post, I'm eating a hashtag donut. Okay? Facebook, I like donuts. Foursquare, this is where I eat donuts. YouTube, here I am, eating a donut. <laughs> Flickr, every photo ever taken of donuts. Instagram, here's a vintage photo of my donut. LinkedIn, my skills include donut eating. <laughs> Pinterest, here's my favorite donut recipe and a picture of what I made. Last FM, that's a music one, now listening to a song called Donuts. WordPress, here's my blog about donuts. Google Plus, I'm a Google employee who eats donuts. That's making a joke about how Google Plus is trying to be Facebook, but they are not as popular as Facebook yet. Meetup, let's eat donuts together, face to face. <laughs> so, um, so when you're thinking about what social media to use, you think about who you want to reach and what you want to do with it. For a lot of us right now, I think Facebook is the place to be. The demographics of Facebook are skewing now to older people. Teenagers um, and young people are leaving it in droves, but their, grand their parents and their grandparents are getting on. So um, for our purposes, I think Facebook is a good place to be. Um, I hope Stephen will talk a little bit about how not everything you post gets to all of your friends. Facebook is definitely controlling who sees what based on what they think you want to see. So if I post something, um, not everybody, not all of my friends will see it. That is correct. And so I'll, I will come back to the Facebook thing real quick. So I have an account as much as I've gone to said accounts. So I do search, I search for things using Pinterest, and these are the things that show up, and I have no, and sometimes it will give you recommendations. This is what you're, the people that you know are looking at and searching for, and sometimes it's a response of the things, it remembers your searches and tries to think of what you might be interested in. And so, of course, I like to say sweet things to, to Laura, and, and of course, you are the most beautiful thing I keep inside my heart. Uh, I would have liked to have stolen that and, and send that to her in a card, but I guess I will, I, I've been busted, I can't do that here. Um, and then there's something about a thin sheet of ice, of snow sliding off the slide, it folding over itself, a photo by something. I like those kinds of things. And they are pictures, and they are with little captions, and you can take pictures and post them and, and tag them in certain ways, very similar to the idea of tagging not just the hashtags but categorizing them. So if people want to do picture searches for love quotes or square dancing or whatever it is, you can find it. It's the photo part of it. It's, uh, it's just and they they're called it's called Pinterest because you pin them to a virtual wall. You pin these photos like you have a cork board, and you can kind of look at them later. Um, a friend of mine has a Pinterest board of square dancing posters. So she's just been finding them, and every time she sees one, she pins it to her, her pin board. And you can go there and find it, and see various square dancing posters that she's found across the internet. So. Oh, that's good. So you have to. So to do that, you have to have an account on Pinterest? <laughs> well. I think you can go to Pinterest and look. To post, to pin things, you'd have to have an account. But to find other people's boards, you don't need to have an account. There's, wait, there's, a, there's a danger here. I want to. There's a danger that I would like to to uh, share with you. You log into Facebook, right? You have your own little personal private account. You decide to go to some of these websites. More and more of them have said, "Hey, we like the Facebook authentication me mechanism. Authentication is proving who you are." that you are who you say you are. And I can do it lots of different ways. Usually it's a username and password. So we like that Facebook thing. So if you've already logged into Facebook and you're surfing, you go to Pinterest, Pinterest will say, hey, do you just want to continue using Facebook? 
We'll use your Facebook login credentials for Pinterest. And now you're posting as, I mean, all of your login information. Now, there are, we're going to talk about service level agreements and, and privacy, but there is some data that is exchanged between these two entities. And you should pay attention to it, look at it, and say, yes, this is okay, or no, it's not. It's a judgment call only you can make. Uh, I, I don't have a problem with it because I don't store squat on my Facebook page. But if you have like tons of personal information on Facebook, which I don't recommend, that people could use to steal identity or other nefarious schemes, then you run the risk of sharing that data, that information. Question. Uh, Rod Keeling from Lubbock, Arkansas. There was a question a while ago about the use of LinkedIn. I don't think you've gotten to that question yet. I, I think I just mentioned that I, it's a, it, LinkedIn is a it's social networking for professionals, whereas social networking in general is about connecting as people and as if you're on the street and you're hanging out with like, your best buds. If for LinkedIn, it is designed to be about professional um, relationships and they LinkedIn specifically says in their their uh, service level agreement what they think you should and should not use the service for that you should only accept friend requests from people that you've actually worked with or know in a professional setting I don't always do a good job of filtering that um, but I try to to say oh yes I've worked with this person but I have some callers that have become my acquaintances or relations on uh, LinkedIn, but you put your resume on there, you put information about there, you can look for work on there for professional work of any kind that you're a professional for. So you could, excuse me as I have hiccups, uh, you could put information on in LinkedIn about square dancing and say, come visit my LinkedIn page. And you, can, you get a URL, which is not visible here because I'm back to the Facebook page, that is yours. And you could say, you can find me on LinkedIn by going to this long, complicated place or putting that on your own page, and I know if like a personal web page, say click here to find me on LinkedIn. Okay. Follow up question? Yes, Ron Q again. Uh, on LinkedIn, one of the things I've noticed, I've got a human resources guy that was a friend of mine you know, posting on there. He deals with human resources all over the United States with his, with his business. And uh, when you've got CEOs sitting down and talking about doing something neat for their companies and things like that, and you've got a a square dance caller that's on there that somebody's friends with, and they say, oh, you know, maybe we should do this. And there are, there, you get quite a few things going that way. Uh, it's an option. It is socialization at its best. We have a uh, question okay, in the back first, because she's closer. But if you want to, she'll come to you. She'll be coming. <laughs> I just didn't want to trip on that. Deborah Carroll Jones, Honorton, Texas. So how important is it anymore with the use of social media for us to be having a web page of our own. I personally think it's incredibly important because you control that. Facebook puts up what it wants to. You can put things up there, but what it shows is what it chooses to show. Um, all of these other things are under the control of these other companies. You control your web page. That's where you get to put yourself forward exactly as you want. It won't go away, assuming that you keep it up. So I personally think that it's really important to have your personal website. I will concur. We have a question in the front as well. Yes, up front. So this social media, <coughs> in a way, using Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and um, uh, all the Pinterest and uh, Snapchat and these other crazy things that are out there are about creating relationships <coughs> and conversations. Your billboard is a good thing, a website, which is why I'm going to spend some money and have somebody help me update mine. I just, I can do it. I don't have the time and I really don't want to spend the time to do it. It's a great, that's a, that's a place not to have a conversation, but to advertise. To, to put it, to actually just push that out and say, hey, here's all the pertinent information. You want to see the things I've written? You want to see the stuff that I've done? You want to see the places where I'm going? There's my calendar. Everything is there. That I control 100%. 100%. Facebook 
and it's related social media is a nice way it's a convenient way on a shoestring budget to put yourself out there to create a conversation but you don't you have some control right you have you have the ability to say hey I'm having a presentation and you're talking people could or could not listen they may or may not find you having and then we talked about the search engines I don't remember if it was Mike or Mike or Bill somebody said um, if I put the hashtag information into the search engine, will I find it? No, but if you type in Stephen Cole, there's two Stephen Cole callers in the United States. One of them is in Texas. I'm not him. I wonder if you could go back uh, to, oh, sorry, Barry McCombs, uh, Calgary, Alberta. <coughs> if you could go back to the idea you said of having various personas on Facebook, I mean, at least the fast and dirty, how, where to look to get it started. I will do two things. First one is I want to show you a little bit about permissions and what that means about sharing publicly and keeping things private. And then I will talk about how to, to create uh, a Facebook page that is related to who you are, what that means, and how, and, and basically then I will add by saying that if you have another email address, even though it violates the Facebook service agreement, meaning that you agree to be one person online all the time, you could, there, there's been some exceptions made, you could create a separate page or a separate entity of yourself that you could use to post things that keeps everything separate. That is your choice to make. I find that it's a lot of work. I don't have that much time. So let me, I'll, I'll let Chris talk, but I'm gonna pull up the permissions first. Okay, so just setting up your, your profile page, which would be Barry McCombs, call, uh, just your personal page that you might have your friends on and your family and things like that. That would be one persona. Then you could have Barry McCombs Square Dance Caller as a page. So you have your profile and then a page, a fan page, or there are various categories for it. So that could be a persona. You could have, you know, Barry McCombs Fiddler, and that could be another persona that you do. And uh, just for the record, so I'm looking at my my Facebook page and there's an entry in here that uh, one of my friends her name is Kayla Hayes Jones made a comment about what her wonderful husband is doing for her treating her to something special not everybody needs to see all this stuff about me or from her but it's there nothing wrong with it right there's nothing wrong with it but if I want to use social media to talk to my friends about square dance calling they might not need to hear what a wonderful husband Vernon is. Thank you, Vernon. I hope you're listening. And I deserve a raise. <laughs> oh, wait. You don't pay. Sorry. So anyway, that, that's what that is. Now I'll get back to the permissions thing. Mike. <coughs> Chris, you mentioned that, that we're kind of in the Facebook mode. Where are all, all the kids going, you said, now? They're, they're going someplace else in droves. No. I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, they will go to where their parents aren't. <laughs> you know, they started out on MySpace, then MySpace went, you know, that they lost interest in that, then they went to Facebook, they're losing interest in Facebook. There are some uh, forms of communication where you post something and then it disappears in 30 seconds or something. Snapchat. 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 Um, Various places. I think that they're on. Um, I think they're still on Instagram. Yes. Doing it, but with pictures. Um, and other than that, I think a lot of people are into Vine, which is you know six-second videos that they post. Yeah, so, Vine. V I N E Vine. Very um, interesting. So I don't know, and it's hard to keep up because as soon as we find it, they're going to leave. <laughs> so back to the privacy thing. So on the top of the page. Uh, towards the right, there's a little icon that has a little lock on it. When I click on the lock, I have an option for Facebook to do a privacy checkup. And then below it, it says, who can see my stuff? Who can contact me? And how do I stop people from bothering me? It tries to tr make it accessible. So I'm going to click on the who can see my stuff. This opens up a small window. And it says, my, my posts are public. Anything that I write. I want the world to be able to see. Now, that's fine, and we can talk about blocking people later, and you can block people, and I highly recommend it. Um, 
Anything now that I create, anything I type on Facebook as a post, is searchable, the world can find it if they really want to or really care, or anybody inside Facebook can find it. Um, and then it says, uh, where do I review uh, who can see and find the things that I've been tagged in? And so there's an activity log, and I can check that. Uh, an activity is just that. It's a log of the activity that people have either posted on your behalf, posted to your wall, or that you posted on other people's walls. And then, um, what do people see on my timeline? I could look at any one of these things and then change them. Um, so I will go to, uh, so I've changed the settings since I've been, you know, look, yeah. Um, setting on in line when I'm posting. So I will click on that and I'll show you some of the stuff that you can change. Okay, we have about 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes? So <coughs> we need to, um, you know, try to cover any other questions that you have. I know it's almost impossible to do this in an hour and 15 minutes, but there are, there's another session later on. Just, uh, the question was, does anything disappear? And in a dis different life, uh, working for a school, my job was to check out uh, kids. And if you want to have a good time, go to the Wayback Machine. Everything is recorded back there. So it's the Internet Wayback Machine, archive.org, A-R-C-H-I-V-E dot O-R-G. And that was Jim Winslow from Morrison, Illinois. Um, and the Wayback Machine, if, if a website's been crawled by some search engine, meaning a program has gone through to see who's got what where, it'll, it might show you the page as it looked a year, two years, ten years ago if it, if it existed. Um, so yes, there's all kinds of things to see. Mike Salerno from Topeka, Kansas. On, on my professional page, it comes up and I, and I make a post and then it wants to, I, I only get, probably got a couple hundred people on there, it only gets to 10. And then it wants me to boost the post. Is that just a marketing tool by, by Facebook? Are they limiting me or what, are, yes. what can I do about that? Facebook is, is not there for your pleasure, it is there to make a profit. And boost post is just a commercial. Um, we, talk about, we talk about the cloud, we talk about the web, Neither one of those things really exist. There's no such thing as a cloud. It doesn't exist. It doesn't, there's not even a pretend cloud. It is a description of an idea. It is the idea that your data is not here, so where does it go? It goes into the cloud. What does that mean? It's complicated. But what it means is it goes and sits on another, another corporation's computers someplace else, going through a publicly funded network, and it sits kind of in a almost ubiquitous place, any place you, in the world you want to go, you're there. And what do they do? To, how do they pay for that data system computing thing? They sell ads. To get ads, they need eyeballs. If you're looking at something, then they're going to sell more ads. You boost your post, that means that you want more eyeballs, that means you're going to pay them X number of dollars. And that is your choice. You could choose to or not to, but you could also tag your friends that will make them see but, uh, your stuff, but it might not necessarily guarantee that they're going to look at your things, because they have to still look at it. They have to say, hey, who's Mike Slarno? Roy Goddard from New Jersey. Uh, this is, some of this stuff is news. You say that you know, when we post something, it of course doesn't necessarily go to all our friends. Is there a way for us to know who got it or who didn't get it, other than their responses? The short answer is no. Uh, there are mechanisms to track who sees what. Those mechanisms are usually used by large corporations to track advertising and spending. So there are options and possibilities, but for us as mere mortals, the answer is not really, or it's complicated. Um, the only way to really be sure is to, make, to ask for confirmation. <coughs> to say, hey, what did you think about this? Which is part of that conversation from the beginning. Who, what are we trying to do in social networking is a conversation between you and somebody else to have a return on investment, which is of your time. So I cannot guarantee that somebody's going to see something if it's free. Now, if I contact the Facebook people or the Google people and I say I want to make a commercial and I want I want to do this, they have specific algorithms that say, okay, what's your target market? 
and you want to hit 35 to 45 year old couples, empty nesters, whatever it is, they have special magic that will, with magic smoke, that will target their, those posts. You say, I want, I want these people to see my post. It will hit their servers, their servers will say, I know these people should see this ad. They can't guarantee it, but they'll push it out. And they say within uh, a certain percentage of certainty, meaning that they're gonna say, well, we think 80% of your market will be seen by this, we'll get it, but I can't guarantee anything. All right, you can pay for Facebook ads. You know, here's a follow-up question, I think. Right. <coughs> Yeah, I know we can pay for Facebook ads, and there's there's Google ads, which is a whole different uh, workshop. Does Facebook have a uh, system where, because I, I have a Facebook page, and I post stuff, and I see lots of other people would do, but for a fee, will it then go to all of the friends, whatever? Because people are, are pushing this as a way to, you know, promote this, but if we don't know who's getting it and who's not getting it, it seems that's an awful spotty way to try and... It is a spotty way, and it is not guaranteed. The, the, what happens for most things with Facebook is that you have the option to follow somebody. You can say, I want to follow Stephen Cole. I want to follow Chris Jensen. I want to follow the goddess. I want to follow Vernon Jones. When that happens, when they post something, whether it has my name in it or not, it usually shows up on my wall. But not always. But not yeah. always, because there's also, it, it has algorithms that manage the amount of content you see, because it doesn't want to inundate you with everything. So it might give you 10 or 15 posts at a time, in which case you might miss it. And the more you like somebody's posts, then they will probably, Facebook will probably show you more of that person's posts. So it's a pulling thing that you can control what you're seeing. So here's an example kind of how you can manipulate that the other direction. So I have some slides I got from my aunt a couple years ago, or if you live in the South, my aunt. Um, people look at me like, why are you talking so funny? And I wanted to have them scanned. And I saw a Facebook ad come through that said, hey, there's a special deal, and I wanted that deal. And it went away, it evaporated. It made me so mad. So what did I do? I searched for slide scanning things. And I look for slide scanning options and all of this stuff, and next thing I know, I am inundated with ads, and there it is. So, if you're looking for a coupon that for to buy something, then that's the way, that's the way I manipulated the system to get the coupon, the deal that I wanted back. I don't know how we could use that in Square Dance Land. It'd be nice to say, hey, have our ads be triggered by something else, but there are no, <coughs> no guarantees. What happens when you like or follow? That's Dottie Welsh from wherever Dottie Welsh lives. <laughs> Nova Scotia, Canada. Uh, and tell me the question again. What, when you like or follow. So if you follow somebody, uh, usually you follow a page, like a, a professional page, and you like somebody as a person. What happens is that there's a link that's created between the two of you, and you get information that they post on a semi-regular basis, both from their page, like if it's you're following them, usually the follow says, if, I'm, if you're following my, my page, if I say, I'm gonna be in Springfield for the Color Lab convention, that will most likely show up at some point. Uh, not guaranteed, but it probably will show up on, my, on a feed. If you like my, my personal page, Likewise, as I post things, they may show up with a higher probability of somebody random on your friend feed. Now, the tr one of the troubles with liking and following, and it's like the dirty underbelly, is that you don't have to be my friend to follow me. So there could be people following your activity that are not your friends, that, are, that don't even know you, they're just digital stalkers. However, so, liking a Facebook page is a two-way relationship, or liking a Facebook person, a persona, is a two-way, you know. You, you ask to be somebody's friend, and they have to accept you. Yes, you have already liked that person, right? To, 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 so when you, sorry, when you like somebody, they, they'll get a request saying that they like you, right? There's that, sorry, I, I messed up because I was thinking of two different things. So, if I like your page, 
and you'll have a, or we have a friend, sorry, if I become your friend, I say, I'm gonna send you a friend request. And you have the option now to be my friend or not. You say yes, then I will, we will start seeing, one minute, we will start seeing conversation, we'll have a conversation, if not linearly, it'll still be there. You can then follow me afterwards. After you're already my friend, you can follow me. But you can follow me without being my friend. If we follow, if you follow me, then I will get your stuff, you will see my stuff often, but not always. Likewise, if you follow me without being my friend, then you will just randomly see stuff that I post. And like, um, if you usually you like a product page or something like that. So if you say like the Dave Matthews Band, or you like something, then when they make updates, they should show up on your page. But again, they're not guaranteed. I think this about concludes the app time. Does anybody else have anything to follow up question wise? Okay, thank you, Stephen, for being here to share your idea. You're welcome. I hope you can at least a little bit informative. I hope it was a little bit informative. We're going to do some stuff online shortly, if not this afternoon. If not now, then I think it's like at 4 o'clock. I'm going to be doing some stuff. So if you want to see it in action.